Greetings and welcome to the Math Olympiad Lecture Series. Today for episode 15, we'll be looking at telescopic sums as well as taking a cursory look at partial fractions. The success criteria for this episode would be for students to be able to evaluate a telescopic product or sum and to be able to express a single fraction as the sum of its partial fractions. In this episode, we'll only be looking at the most basic form of partial fractions. For more in-depth treatment of partial fractions, do look out for a separate video in the O-Level AMF series. Now, instead of me explaining how to do a telescopic sum or product, I thought it would be better for you to try a question and see if you can invent the telescopic method on your own. So here's question number one. Evaluate this product. Bracket 1 plus half, close bracket, times bracket 1 plus 1 third, close bracket, times bracket 1 plus 1 quarter, and this product keeps continuing until you reach 1 plus 1 over 99. So pause the video here and give this question a good try. So the trick to this question is to first simplify this product. What we're going to do is to take the terms inside each of the bracket and express it as a single fraction. This will give us 3 over 2 times 4 third times 5 over 4 times all the way to 100 over 99. And what you're going to notice is that the numerator in each of the terms is going to cancel with the denominator in the subsequent term. So for example, in the first term, we have 3 in the numerator that cancels out the 3 in the denominator in the second term. Similarly, 4 will cancel with 4, and so on, all the way to 99. And you'll see that there's only two numbers left, 100 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator. So we will get 100 over 2, which is 50. Were you able to get the answer? Moving on to question 2. Evaluate the sum of 3k squared plus 3k plus 1 from k equals to 0 to k equals to 49. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. One way to solve this is to make use of power summations that we have covered in the last lecture. We can split this summation into three sums. First, 3 times the sum of squares plus 3 times the sum of natural numbers and a sum of ones. Recall that the sum of squares is given by the formula n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. And I've ignored k equals to 0 because it's a trivial case for both the sum of squares and the sum of natural numbers. Next, for the sum of natural numbers, the formula is n times n plus 1 over 2. And lastly, for the last sum, it's just 1 plus 1 plus 1 50 times. And in this case, k equals to 0 is an important case because when k is 0, it's still 1. In total, we'll get 125,000. But the question is, is there a more elegant way to solve this problem? A shortcut. Well, it turns out that telescopic sums is a much faster method, but a little bit harder to spot. The trick here is to add k cubed and subtract k cubed. You'll see that the first four terms now is easily factorized into k plus 1 cubed minus a k cube at the back. So if we substitute the values for k, let's take it uh, in descending fashion. So k equals to 49 will give us 50 cube minus 49 cube. Then k equals to 48 will give us 49 cube minus 48 cube all the way to 1 cube minus 0 cube. Then using the telescopic sum method, the 49 cubes will cancel, the 48 cubes will cancel, everything will cancel except for 50 cube and 0 cube. So the final answer will be 50 cubed, which is just 125,000. So were you able to get the answer? So to recap, in a telescopic product, we're able to express each of the terms in such a way that the numerator and the denominators of adjacent terms can cancel each other out nicely. Similarly, for a telescopic sum, we're able to express each of the terms in the sum as the sum or difference of two to three other terms, such that each of these terms will cancel the adjacent ones out nicely. 
Basically, doing a telescopic series is like playing a round of squid games. The aim is to get the terms to kill off each other until only a few terms remain at the start and at the end. Moving on to question 3. Evaluate the sum. Half plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12 plus 1 over 20 and so on and so forth until 1 over 420. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. So this problem has been seen in primary schools before and the expected solution would be something like this. You would just brute force it and look for a pattern. So if we just add the first two terms together, half plus one over six just gives us two over three. If we add one more term, half plus one over six plus one over 12, we'll get three over four. And you'll see that if you add the first four terms, it becomes four over five. You'll just see that the pattern will be the number of terms will give you the numerator, then the denominator will just be the numerator plus one. And you can see that since we have 20 terms, so it'll be 20 over 21. So did you get the answer? Before we move on to the next question, we need to recognize that there are two shortcomings with this pattern finding approach. First is that if you do not know the general term, you can't quite determine the total number of terms in this question unless the question gives it directly to you. Second is that if it's a more complicated question, can we still find a pattern? So we need a more reliable method to tackle this question. So what we really want to do is actually find the general term to this summation. So if we examine each term's denominator, you can break up 2 into 1 times 2, 6 into 2 times 3, and the last term, the denominator of 420, can be expressed as 20 times 21. So this is essentially a summation of 1 over n times n plus 1 from 1 to 20. And this is where partial fraction kicks in. We can express 1 over n times n plus 1 as the sum of two smaller fractions, a over n plus b over n plus 1. Next, we express the right-hand side as a single fraction. So we make a common denominator of n times n plus 1, and we can compare the numerators on both sides. So 1 is equal to a n plus a plus b n. Next, we can compare the constant terms on both sides, so those highlighted in red, a is equal to 1, and if we compare the coefficients of n, a plus b must be equal to 0, therefore a equals to 1 and b equals to negative 1. So using partial fractions, we are able to express the summation as the sum of 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1 from n equals to 1 to 20. And by substituting 1 to 20, we get a telescopic sum. So let's examine this. 1 over 1 times 2 is the same as 1 over 1 minus half. 1 over 2 times 3 is the same as half minus 1 third, and so on. See the last term, 1 over 20 times 21 is the same as 1 over 20 minus 1 over 21. With that, we can begin the telescopic sum process, aka squid game for math, and get the terms to kill each other off. So you see, half cancels with half, one third cancels with one third, so on and so forth, leaving behind only two terms, one over one at the start and one over 21 behind. And the difference, one minus one over 21, gives us 20 over 21 as our final answer. Let's do a quick recap of partial fractions. Normally, we start with two partial fractions and we add them together to get a single fraction. But in partial fractions, we are taking the single fraction and asking ourselves, what were the two partial fractions that were added together to give us this single fraction? So the general idea is that if you have a single fraction with two distinct factors, say x plus one and x plus two, you can re-express this as the sum of two partial fractions, a over x plus 1 and b over x plus 2, where a and b are constants to be determined. Similarly, if you have a fraction with three distinct factors, you can express it as the sum of three partial fractions. So in this case, a over x plus 1 plus b over x plus 2 plus c over x plus 3, where a, b, and c are constants to be determined. And how do we determine them? Firstly, we add the three fractions together by making a common denominator, 
and then we can compare the numerators on both sides. So let's go through an example that involves all this. So in question four, we want to evaluate this sum. Now the weird bracket outside is a floor function. So whatever we get, we need to round the final answer down. And what do we have inside the floor function? We have 2020 divided by one times two times three plus 2020 divided by two times three times four plus so on and so forth until the last term, 2020 divided by 99 times 100 times 101. So pause the video here and give this question a good try. So essentially there's three parts to this problem. First, we need to work out the general term. Second, from the general term, we need to express it in the sum of its partial fractions. And then from the sum of the partial fractions, we want to get them to cancel each other off using telescopic sum. So firstly, the general term. By observing this expression, we can see that this is just the sum of 2020 divided by n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 from n equals to 1 to n equals to 99. Now, since the general term consists of three distinct factors, we can express this as the sum of three partial fractions, which is a over n plus b over n plus 1 plus c over n plus 2, where a, b, and c are constants to be determined. Next, we can combine the right-hand side as a single fraction, and then we'll compare the numerators on both sides. So we'll get 2020 equals to a bracket n plus 1 times n plus 2, plus bn bracket n plus 2, plus cn bracket n plus 1. Now, instead of expanding the right-hand side and comparing the coefficients of n square n and the constant terms, a shortcut would be to substitute any value of n that we like. So first, we can substitute n equals to 0. This will give us 2a equals to 2020, therefore a equals to 10, 10. We can also substitute n equals to negative 1. This will give us b equals to negative 20, 20. And lastly, we can substitute n equals to negative 2 on both sides. This will give us c equals to 10, 10. Now that we've expressed the general term as the sum of its partial fractions, first we can take out a common factor of 10, 10 from all the three terms. Next, we can slowly substitute in n equals to 1 to n equals to 99. And let's just substitute the first one first. So when n equals to 1, we're going to get 10, 10 bracket 1 over 1 minus 2 over 2 plus 1 third. So nothing quite interesting yet. So let's substitute the next two, n equals to 2 and n equals to 3. And here we can spot something. You can see that these three terms, 1 third, negative 2 third, and 1 third, they'll cancel out. And if we continue this with n equals to 4, you'll see that 1 quarter minus 2 quarters plus 1 quarter, that also cancels out. And this is going to continue. And you're going to see that only three terms remains at the start, 1 over 1 minus 2 over 2 plus half. And three terms remains at the end, plus 1 over 100 minus 2 over 100 plus 1 over 101. So altogether, we're going to get 10, 10 bracket, these six terms added together. And that will give us 5,049 over 100 times 101. So by cancelling the common factors, we'll get 5,049 divided by 10. So that's 504.9. And remember that in this question, we want to round down. So we're going to get 504 as our final answer. So did you get the answer? So with that, we've come to the end of the lecture. But before I let you go, here are some extension problems for you to mull over to see if you've truly understood telescopic sums. Not all of these will involve partial fractions. But in problem one, it will. Uh, it goes simply evaluate 2021 divided by 1 times 3 plus 2021 divided by 3 times 5 and so on and so forth until 2021 divided by 45 times 47. In problem two, evaluate 1 over root 2 plus root 1 plus 1 over root 3 plus root 2 so on and so forth until 1 over root 100 plus root 99. Next we have problem 3 and problem 4. Lastly we have problem 5 and problem 6. 
Now, solutions to these extension problems can be found in the info section once lecture 16 is uploaded. I've also just uploaded the solutions to the extension problems for lecture 14 on power sums. We've come to the end of episode 15 on telescopic sums. Do stay tuned to episode 16, which will be covering pigeonhole principle. Do like this video and subscribe to the channel if you are interested in more math Olympiad materials. But with that, please have a great day of learning.